The following podcast contains mature language and adult discussions. You know, the technical difficulties in our opening today uh, made the Kennedy assassination look like a well-organized affair, if you ask me. Uh, this is Click This, the Kevin Nash podcast. He's was that, a, was that a bait? Was you, are you trying to bait me? We spoke during the week, and uh, I, I watched a, a very compelling uh thesis on the kennedy assassination on prime i wish Which I, re- I think we first started laughing at right when you when you started telling me about it yes and the crew it kind of sounded like an outland because we've been talking about this for how many years right the kennedy thing it's, how it's, crazy do you have to get now to get well, coverage exactly like how many how many angles you know it, it, at this point like it's it's you know the, the the kill shot came from an alien spacecraft would be like okay well that's new. I haven't heard that. So, um, I, well, I'm going to see if I can get in and out of this as, as, as soon as possible. So it starts off, and they, you know, they go into all the, they, they go into a tape from the. You know, Would this be a, a documentary you watched? Yeah. Well, it's yeah, it was a documentary on um, on, uh, on Ke- the Kennedy assassination on Prime. I don't on remember, Prime. Okay. I don't remember what the name of it was. And there are fucking six or seven, you know, that are there that you, you know, so you'd have to. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. And if you scroll far enough down that documentary, you start getting those fucking like shot on VHS by Vijay Gupta. Yes. You know, you know, it's a little green. I actually got one of them that was was a Kennedy assassination. It's a documentary actually filmed by John Wilkes Booth. That was fucking a, a prophetic, a prophetic man he yes, was with with the, with the correlations with the Booth and uh, Oswald and Kennedy and, and Lincoln. Exactly. But so uh, if we go back to it, so they have a, 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 a tape, and it's basically it's no uh, no bullshit, man. This guy is is he's in, he's involved in the organized crime industry, and he is saying on the tape. They are going to fucking kill Kennedy. We are going to fuck. It's not we're going to get him. It's we are going to kill Kennedy. So this was like a bug that they planted that they I got him? What the, or was it an interview with? It's a fucking, I just, they just, while the, they, they show like the, I think they showed the picture of the guy they were talking to. Mm-hmm. And then they show like the, the. Re, like the reel to reel thing, like moving down, and, and it's got the. Okay, uh, so it was like, probably like caught, a, like on an FBI bug or something. Like a, like yeah, that. and then they've got like, the closed captions, so you can you know, re, you know, read along with it. Was that it by any chance? That one that just popped up, uh, X, uh, JFK X, solving the crime of the century. Looks like starring um, a little. What's his name from Succession? Practically in that. Uh, it, it. If that, it, it, I know that the fucking like the the the. the Hypothesis of this is that the the, the, the kind of the uh, expert is a special effects person. So maybe if you Google special effects squib JFK, that you'll you'll get it. So anyway, long story short, I hate when people say that. Um, so I retract it. He says that. If you watch it now, I, I will. I will take the place of, of John Kennedy, even knowing how this ends. Um, but does it? So th- they 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 show the Zabruder film, and the original one is fucking really grainy. And back in the day, I think it was Kodak that that was filmed on. They had like indoor and outdoor film and i think he actually had 
like indoor film, so it was actually not even like the proper film that he should have had to, to film this. Uh, one of the things on the Zabruder film that I've never noticed before is as the car comes and goes behind the and where it's lost behind the traffic sign mm -hmm. for a, a, a short moment there, the fucking framing drops. And the fucking car, like, you know, is much, like, it's almost like, sh like shoulder, you know, shoulder height. So let's, let's just watch this back here so we can, and, uh, and watch when it goes behind the thing. Watch, watch the framing change. Boom. And see what way it'll go, right? See? Like, see up there, there. So, so that pole acts like a wipe. Yeah, that, the and that's where they that's where they cut the that's where they cut like frames out of the out of the out of the uh, actual Zabruder film. So it comes. See how it changes. You can see that you can you can visibly see that that car drops. That you'll see it. It'll come. It'll come, and then boom. See it right there. I mean, it drops. So he's holding his, yeah, you know, and that's and on that, the impact. So uh, the first boom, shot. but during this you'll see before, and they've got it. You know, of course this is like the, this is frame by frame. You, you'll see him before the before the kill shot. You'll see him put a fucking uh, like a like bring his hand to his his head, and then he, that's where they say he puts a squib. and then he puts it down, and then Jackie fucking's got the wire. And she fucking does the gizmo, and the, so. The, and then she does the gizmo, and boom. I don't know. I think the. I mean, is it is it deterioration of the film possibly? Uh, so what they're saying is this is this is the the, the theory. Okay. Very Siegfried and Roy, the, 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 the Lincoln was tricked out to have a concealed compartment behind the, the seats that where Kennedy and, and uh, Jackie are. And that Officer Tippett was, um, his nickname on the Dallas police force was JFK. Because he looked, you know, he he looked like uh, the president, and him being like they there there there's several uh, sightings of the of the killing of Tippett. One of them is a five foot ten, short, ruddy, complected, like somebody that looks nothing like Oswald. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and you know, he walks up and he shoots him in the face. He shoots Tippett in the face, and then he, as Tippett's laying there, shoots him in the back of the head, which pretty much would even up to the, what happens. You know, if you got hit with a bullet here and got hit in the back, boom, and you know, mm -hmm. kind of mimic that. So they, 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 they get Tippett's body and they put it. And, you know, put it in a suit to match the president's, and he's. So I don't know if the CIA it, it just whacks a fucking cop. I don't know what the fuck, you know, because there's there, there's a lot of gray matter in this. You just gotta go. I'm just going with it. I'm fucking from 40 minutes in. So, uh, but they 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 do the fucking swerve derv. And what it is is fucking this. Like nobody fucking saw swibs in fucking you know 63. So Swib would have fucking, you know. And uh, so they, you know, when they take off, there's no Secret Service in the vehicle. And the Secret Service doesn't follow the car. The car goes to Parkland. Right. And, and then they make that. They, so they that's where they would have made, the, you know, make the change because that would have been a Squib and not an actual headshot. And then when they pull Tippett in from the back because... They were saying 
and they have, I think, an expert. Like, if somebody had that massive of a head wound, mm -hmm. and then also like the, the through and through, like the amount of blood would have been way more than 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 like con like everybody in the in the, in that car would have been covered with 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 brain matter and you know mm -hmm. blood and then when you see the back of the car and it's photographed there's basically like an arch in the back of the car it's like it's it's it almost looks like you if you pulled a fucking body out of the back and let it left it there and pulled up to the fucking park and that, that, that that's how much blood came out of it I, you know right so that was the uh and so, then, so 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 how did you, you have, feel at the end of it? How did, did you feel like it was a? Uh, well, they, 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 you, you don't exp <clears throat> excuse me. You don't explain to me um, what the fuck Kennedy did. Well, he waited for for fucking Elvis to die. Then they both ran a fucking McDonald's in Kalamazoo. Like what the like? It's not exactly like like what? Where, where did you know? So they JFK put this theory had, up, but they don't follow up with. Well, yeah, JFK had kids, so you never. I think. Right. Like they're gonna kill me. Like well, before I went through all that shit, I'd fucking I, I would have just said, "All right," because Johnson takes the presidency anyway. So why mm -hmm. not just say, "Man, I got too much fucking heat. I'm gonna get fucking whacked." He's out, fucking campaigning to be reelected. Yeah, in Dallas. So it's like it, it, there's too many, like sensationalized. Why? Like it's 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 a fucking it's it's clever, but not plausible. Yeah, it's one of those deals where you're just like it got over with, and I went, "Wow, man, this will never." Then they showed a picture of 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 of, of Trump, and Trump wanted to, you know. It was, it, it was during his presidency when the uh, documents were supposed to be we're supposed given to get some to more the, documents. To, yeah, yeah, given to the public. And Trump was, I mean, he was like, fuck it. Like, this is the, you know, it's supposed to be done. And they fucking basically said no. Mm -hmm. Our The American society, our, our culture is not ready to. Which makes you wonder, what is, what is in there that well, our culture yeah. is not ready for? So. Yeah. You can't have a document come out that says our country was in any way responsible for the assassination of one of our own presidents because and there's a, what it would know, do. A, yeah. There's a really compelling one that's done by um, my buddy um, Adam Rodriguez that uh, did the Magic Mics with me. Um, he He turned me on to it. And it's a it's like a, a British cold case guy, and it's um, the hypo hypothesis is when they took off, like the the first shot went, you know went in Kennedy, and then the second shot missed, and then they took off. And as they took off, the Secret Service guy that was standing in the car, the Lincoln behind the, the president's, jerked, and when he did, his M16 fired. And that was with the fucking round, because if you've ever seen the, the uh, pictures of the autopsy, the it's it's definitely a full metal jacket through and through, um, with the with the wound in, in the upper back, to whereas the skull wound shows the the hole is small, but like if if it was an M16, it tumbles. And you see through a, through the X-ray of the brain, um, you see fragmentation of bone, which that's what it would do. It basically would explode, and as it tumbled and gathered speed, it would fucking. That's what it, it would do: is it would rip the fucking, rip that fucking flap, mm -hmm. and uh, you know. Could, and so, where was this? Where was the rifle? Where was he? Uh, he was in the Secret Service car behind. The, okay. So then when they took after, I mean, the president definitely got hit. So Oswald's first shot was money. The second one fucking hit nothing. And then the fucking 
because it's 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 when you listen to the 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 the, the first one that the, I was talking about, when you listen to the gunshots, it's it's impossible to somebody to do a, it's it's just not a bolt action. And then the the crazy thing about it all is, so it's. I want to think. I want to say it's less than twenty fucking minutes after Kennedy's been shot, and the the bulletin comes out, and the bulletin is that the president has been shot by a thirty caliber rifle. They have not found the gun in the book depository yet. A news agency reported the caliber. No, of it's the-, the fucking. It's the police bulletin. Oh, oh, that the, was sent the, the, out to the yeah, to and the it's press. it's okay. it's no, it was sent out to the fucking police. Oh, to the police from like we're the looking Secret Service. For, we're, yeah, we're looking for. It's the Dallas fucking dispatcher telling the fucking cops what the fucking lowdown is, and they haven't found the gun yet, and it's just and it's a thirty caliber. That's pretty crazy. That's fucking yeah. I mean, it's just every time you watch one of these fucking things. There's another fucking tidbit of shit where you go, well, that's re- you know that's redacted on, on some fucking piece of paper somewhere, you know. But well, just recently I heard the uh, the Secret Service agent that placed the bullet on the on the gurney next to uh, Kennedy, who who admitted to that they did, he'd found the uh, I'm saying bullet, but I mean the, the uh, pristine. The the uh, the bullet that that went through like seven fucking people and three bones and right. yeah, but I mean it's it's the actual it's the bullet because it's pristine the projectile, right? It's a bullet. Yeah, but it's, there's two parts too, right? The the part that comes out and then there's the there's the, the shell, the shell, the, right? The shell and then, and then there's the bullet. The bullet. Yeah. So yeah, he said, oh, he said I I found it. I didn't know where to do it. I, I placed it on the on the gurney. Yeah. It's completely. I mean, it's. I don't even know if there's rifling on that fucking. I just love the fact that the Warren Commission, including Gerald Ford, who was part of it, you know, sat down and and, and came up with a fucking report. And they, I mean, it's just like, like everybody was so fucking. Was that the agent Paul Landis, uh, Steve? That said, uh, he's the one that found the bullet and just kind of placed it on the on the gurney. Okay. Yep. Well, so, boy, we opened with, with a little history lesson here this week. How about that? You never know what you're going to get here. Well, if you look, if you, I mean, if you look at it, like one of the, one of the, uh, the things were, that really stuck out when, when this, uh, thesis, uh, was, was displayed or explained was that, J. Edgar Hoover never fucked with a mob, ever. And Robert Kennedy fucking like that's when he got it. When he be, you know came in, that was his you know number one thing was to go after organized crime. And then at the same time, Kennedy was going to break up the CIA, which you mm-hmm. we you were talking about that before the show started. Um, because we were, I, I told you I was going to probably bring up some of this shit. Mm-hmm. And you were saying there's 17 pages uh, that's a document that you've got. Mm-hmm. Would you like to go into that, please? Yes. So I can, Steve, if you, easiest way to get this to Steve, for God's sakes, we have uh, 2.0 technology here. I'll email it to you, Steve, and maybe you can bring it up as I describe it. So, yeah. So there's a, uh, this was following the Bay of Pigs. I'm researching a project about the Cuban exiles after Castro's uh, taking over the country. Steve's and saying text it if it's already on your phone. It's on my phone. It's on my. It's on the computer that I'll have here. Okay. So, um, where are yes. we going, Ringo? To the top, to the very top. I'd rather be Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> he looked very relaxed all the time. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so yeah, the the uh they were uh 
powerful people in the White House placing the blame squarely on the CIA. And the the proposed result of that was um, a reorganization, I think is what they called it. And um, in regards to Castro, I mean, there's documentation in White House memos from uh, 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 Schlesinger about... Uh, hiring, getting the help of uh, Sam Giancana and uh, Santo Traficante and some of those guys in getting to Castro. So there was business with the mafia in the White House at that time. So there's that whole angle, right? Then the, the CIA angle. There's a lot of compelling uh, arguments that can be made for a lot of different theories. The squib angle is new to me. I'm going to have to digest this over the next... Uh, We're talking 60 years ago. I know. Oh, I know. Just unbelievable. But, and, and, you know, and that's what I mean when, they say, when I say that they will not declassify some stuff still. And we're 60 years out of it. Most of the people who would have been involved are probably dead and we still would not be able to handle that if there's culpability well, I mean, on the it, part it, it, to me it's one of those things where however your your opinion is of the 9-11 situation i just want somebody to explain to me why world trade center 7 imploded and that was the one that had the fucking trillion dollars that fucking disappeared out of it. Now, you know, you sent me that. Um, and I, I've seen a lot of the proposed things. There's even discussion of the way the building fell. And then you hear architects talk and say, well, high rises were built like that so as not to fall over. No, I'm so, talking about not World Trade Center. Not oh, North which building South. did you say? Which building? I did? said World Trade Center Building 7 was oh, never Oh, where the fucking, basement had... Uh... It had all the fucking... Right. And it okay. just fucking imploded like the fucking the dunes. When they fucking, you know, when wind came out there, they started blowing up fucking hotels and the putting hotels, up the Palacio. Right. You know, that's that's the one, man, that just like, you know... Uh, let's see a report here from Steve. NIST found no evidence supporting the evidence of a blast event or that world. Is this after they for... found Ada's fucking entire passport? <laughs> Mohammed Atta. Come on, man. Fuck. Before. <laughs> okay. All right. So I know Official Fingers was listening to us last week, Kevin. He said he was on the way back from a holiday in Poland, back to good old England. I uh, couldn't ask for a better listen for the drive home. Uh, nice one, gents. Thank Thanks, you, Ma. Fingers. Silver Bullet, please give a raise to whoever wrote the description for this episode. It sounds like I'm about to hear the most intricate and insightful discussions. Then it's just Kevin Sean making a couple of easy jokes about looking into their eyes. Love it. You know us. You know, it's hard to come up with shit. Because I spend like 23.7 hours a day having Donald Trump live in my mind rent free. Mm. So, and then I, then, then it's, um, you know, a barrage of uh, hate mail uh, sent out to uh, anyone I can about how much I disdain the human. Um, oh, wait, no, I don't. I really don't fucking give a shit. I was actually kind of uh, glad that they, you know, because it was such a bogus, like the four, you know, four hundred fifty million that they knocked it. I like the fact that he said he had five hundred million, but you know, he was going to use it for his his uh, campaign, and then they knocked it down to like one seventy three, which would leave you three hundred million for your campaign, and. Um, Like, just I, I didn't see I didn't see like a any kind of movement for a cashier's check or no they they'll wait like all the uh, all the contractors that work on his buildings will wait exactly wait to see that money I you know, did another th a, mm -hmm. another thing that that I found interesting was that 
um, and that Biden had Obama and Clinton uh, show up to the Rockefeller Center and support him, yet Donald Trump's ex-vice president absolutely will not endorse him in any form or fashion. Because, as I pointed out to my wife, because she, she, she's surgically bound to not listen to me, she can't fucking run. Um, <laughs> I told her Just that... that Empty that, the fucking bottle, the pill bottle. <laughs> that fucking... Pence is actually an evangelical Christian. Like he won't have, he would won't sit across and have dinner with any fucking other female but his wife. I mean, he's got this moral code that he just for four years went. Eh. If he says they can grab her, we can grab their pussies. We can grab their pussies. And then all of a sudden, it's just like it's like all of a sudden it's you know, you know Mister Wizard, wake up, Mister Wizard. Uh. What? They had a gallows out there? Yeah, you dumb fuck. The only thing missing was fucking during the the the, um, the tea party, not the insurrection, but whatever it was, the fucking uh, group uh, tour of the Capitol. Oh right, yes, the, it was. Uh, they um they didn't have the guy with the white hat grab him. And have him take a gut shot, or 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 Pence at any time to not in the microphone say I'm a patsy. So, this is, boy, we're, we're heavy on the JFK tonight. Aren't God, we? we're tying, got to tie everything in the JFK. I mean, my father was, um, and I, I know this is where I get it from. My father was just absolutely. Man, if like my dad would have lived in our times and could have had like gotten, because you know, he just was, he just knew something didn't smell right, and uh, just ran with it until he until he died. But uh, the uh, yeah, this this would be, it's almost like there was a something on I, I was on the internet I was watching. And they had that moon landing, on, on the unmanned moon landing, and the fucking the the footage of it is so fucking horrible. It's barely fucking. Yet, you know, we've got uh, clear as bell sixteen millimeter fucking shots from nineteen seventy two of the fucking astronauts fucking tooling around on a dune buggy. Looks like it was, you know, looks like the, was, the Kubrick film we're talking about. Yeah, it looks like it was. It looks like it was shot in a fucking soundstage in fucking London, for God's sake. So, in all fairness, the uh, the look into my eyes was something that began in the pre-show. Which, if you're a member of ClickThisTV.com, you'd be in the pre-show with our live audience today, and it kind of spilled out into the two hours. Uh, that Kevin and I spoke on a live mic. As soon as I got out, like we we shut down, I immediately went to YouTube and and listened to Brian Adams. Look into my eyes. I had to. I just because because everything you do, yeah, we do it for you. G Money was listening last week or watching. Said, I remember this old cigarette ad. It goes something like this. Four out of five doctors who smoke Camel brand cigarettes. Who smoke, smoke Camel brand cigarettes. Shouldn't you? That was you threw one of those out last week when the the uh, the old cigarette ads. You had, I remember cart seeing, not in my lifetime, but subsequent to when they ran first. The Flintstones were advertising a... A cigarette brand. I don't remember which one on those old little commercials. Black and Philip white commercials. Philip Morris was huge. Uh, who was the? Um, was it Philip Morris that that ran the Lucy Show? Oh, who sponsored? Yeah, who sponsored them? I, I don't remember that. I, I, Could have I, been I, back in those days. It was like that was you know you had one sponsor. Like Death Valley Days was brought to you by Borax. Yeah. 
you know. And they called this the soap opera got its name because they were sponsored by the uh, the yeah. detergent companies. I'd love just one huge fat sponsor. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah, it was. Not that we don't love our sponsors. The original sponsor of I Love Lucy was Philip Morris. My father smoked Philip Morris's. Were they... uh, Crush-proof box. Were they filterless? Because I know the Camels and Luckies were... I think that... I I know he's... Because I'm pretty sure he switched to menthol. I don't know when menthol became a, a Wow, thing. that's so urban of him. My dad well, grew up Detroit. in River, my dad grew up River Rouge, man. Fucking Detroit. The only way my dad was an athlete in River Rouge was he was on the swim team. Was he? Yeah. He was a swimmer. My dad could smoke fucking eight packs of cigarettes and still we'd go up to this fucking lake and it was like, a mile and a half, two miles across. He'd fucking just dump, jump off the dock, swim, go to the fucking far end, stand up on the fucking, so you could see him across the fucking <laughs> lake and then jump back in and swim. I mean, he was just a fucking beast in the water. Where me, fucking, once it got to my knees, I'm like, I'm, I am fucking. How close to a lake were you in, in oh, where fuck, you grew man. up? I'm like, Houghton Lake's probably. Hour and a half, two hours from our house. Yeah, I mean, so you'd still have to you'd have to drive out to to wherever. You yeah, I mean out. you couldn't back in that. And <laughs> even in those days, like Lake Erie was, you know, Lake Erie. I mean, the Detroit River, Lake Erie was fucking a mile from our house. Mm. Yeah, there were no lakes by me. Although I fell in the Hudson River twice as a kid, if if, if you can believe that, I was hopping on rocks. My brother, there was a movie theater down on the waterfront. We were waiting for. I remember it was the opening weekend of Breaking the movie, nineteen eighty four, and I was hopping on rocks and I slipped on moss and I went right in, up to my neck in the Hudson River. I got out. I tell my father at the time, I'm like, "Let's go to the movie. I'll dry off." I was very excited to see this. He's like, "You have every disease known to man and every missing body in Manhattan." Part of them is on you right now. Yeah. You're going the fuck home to shower. And I did. The first mentholated cigarette, Kevin, credited to a young man named Lloyd Spud Hughes in the 20s. Wow. He surreptitiously added menthol crystals to his smoking tobacco to help soothe his chronic cold. Sounds like a little LSD sprinkle to me. But apparently he was trying to uh, soothe the cold. Yeah, because nothing, what he's nothing, going with. nothing fucking helps a chest cold quite like a fucking unfiltered menthol cigarette. Mm, some of those burning <laughs> crystals. Open it up. Oh, God. <laughs> fucking hell. Uh, M- MGTKMG. Really hope the boys got to feel all that promo action on Monday night. I want to hear the reaction to Drew and Punk's shoot promo. And how The Rock came out and pulled the ultimate heel move and didn't even speak into the mic when it was anticipated. Well, I would say The Rock's a heel, finally. I was talking about getting fan heel heat a couple of weeks ago, but I think um, the close of Raw this week certainly saw to the fact that um, he'll have some legit heel heat. What do you think? I liked it. I thought it was great. I love the fact that they got color. Yes, me too. That, that Cody got color. Um, and it was because, a blade job, right? It, it was. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. So, come on, man. It's a Rhodes. I don't know if. It's a fucking Rhodes. That's in his no, blood, I, man. I know, but. It's dead. You just, it, before you fucking learn how to flat back in the fucking Rhodes family, you learn a blade. You cut a, you cut a fucking <laughs> razor. <laughs> come out of the womb, you blame. Dad, what, what I, I just hope I just got my fucking. My stocking. What's what's with the fucking straight leg, the straight uh, edge fucking uh, single single side Gillettes? It's time you became a man, Cody. <laughs> Baby, don't worry. You don't know right now, but that, that red gonna that gonna equal green one of these days. <laughs> so yeah, so they and you know they, and a lot of people I've I read some things were like, well, you know, PG thirteen. Motherfucking, if your kid's up at 11 o'clock watching that, like, you got a lot more problems going on than him seeing a fucking blade job. 
I still think you he should. Probably, he probably already bumped into your fucking bong and spilled bong water. So it's like. Now that you, I, I don't know if I ever credited you with this, but I, I will now. When I heard the Netflix deal, I was a little confused about, okay, live events on, on Netflix. But I thought back, you remember your hypothesis, uh, not hypothesis, your suggestion on what they should do to keep Raw edgy if they were being forced on Monday to have to sanitize it, then you do a Friday on a streamer where you can go balls to the wall. Balls to the wall. And they fuck, they're going to have that now, basically. Yeah. So I wonder if their tea, all this stuff, we talked about it a few weeks ago when the language started getting a little weird. Um, now we got a blade job. Are they... Are they getting ready for where it will eventually be when they don't have to worry about any of that shit on Netflix? Well, it's the same as I, you know, I, I suggested that that CM Punk would be a, it might might be the special guest referee, <clears throat> and then we said, ah, he's not going to be able to count, and then they made the fucking point, but you're not going to be able to count. That's your counting arm, and he dropped down and fucking made the count with his other hand, right. And then if they said, no, 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 he's not going to be the referee, he's, but they, they came out and clarified that he will be doing color commentating during that match. Yes. Which, if you're in the fucking house for WrestleMania, that's going to make it for you since you don't get to hear the commentator. So I'm not buying that. I'm just saying, you know, you, you want to want to add a little something extra. You still got to, you know, one, I, if I could, I could be a little, little add on Monday. Absolutely. Little, Ch- little, little punk determines that, uh, they got to, they got to. How many uh, weeks we have? Two? Well, this is going to air Monday, so. This will air Monday. Uh, Monday's what? Uh, Monday's the first, right? Yes. So. Okay, so it's that. Okay, so we're. So it's that. Yeah, we're, we're, it, we're, that Monday's the go home. The go home. Chai Bull says, Kevin, I'm currently in Daytona Beach and just left Portofino. Wanted to try it based on your recommendation on the podcast a few months back. Absolutely delicious food, and the owner was so nice. Thanks for the suggestion. George is a, is a guy that owns a George. He's a Greek gentleman, and uh, we've been going there since we, we came down here. So we've been uh, Same ownership? Yeah. Oh, wow. About I want maybe eight years ago, some guy was sitting at one of the booths up 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 front. There's a half moon in the if you go in the back of the restaurant to the right hand side, there's a half moon. That's the Rat Pack fucking booth. That's that's the that's the Nash. We've got several of our of our uh, Christmas pictures were taken. That was. Christmas Eve, we always go to Portofino. Mm. So that was, and you know, when T was, when T was with us, I was like, it wasn't even a, just like, you know, Dad, what time we go to Portofino? It's eight. You know, the, the wife always wants to, why so late? Like, I, I, what is with this? Like, well, we, you're we a, a, you're a, you're on a different clock than T. Yeah, but I mean, it's like fucking. It, we're, Let's go back to fucking. What, are, we, are we up north having supper? Supper's at five. Supper's at five. <laughs> you eat supper at five. We just had this discussion tonight. I did because uh, it's my wife's birthday, so we're going uh, to the city, staying at the plaza, doing a, a classic New York weekend. Lived here forever, and there's some places that. Thank God this is after after the fact. Oh yeah, no, no. I know we air be, Monday. Be, Don't worry. They'd be waiting for you, man. You know, we air Monday. Um, so, um, I had to make some restaurant reservations, right? So got some stuff done and then, so I wanted to do a high tea. Okay. So the high tea at the Russian tea room at three thirty. So I, I wanted a later dinner. So now it's, it begins this discussion and I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit of the Tamara camp here with, uh, with what time if, we, if we're having the high tea, which it does involve food. At 3.30, you can't do a 6, you can't do a 7 dinner. This has to be 8 or later. So I'd never eaten at Balthazar. It was a big, 
your celebrity spot in the nineties. And I guess it's still a bit of a scene, not, not like it used to be. You can, st- you can get a reservation there. So 10 o'clock they're offering me. I couldn't do it. I didn't pull the trigger on it. Oh, fuck, man. That's it. That... I got another place. 10 seemed too late. If they could have done nine, I would have done nine. But that, that, that was kind of my line in the sand. 10 same. is, t- 10's perfect. <laughs> God. I mean, that's, that means you, you get done with dinner and you fucking, that's, you don't have to fucking have a protein drink before you go to make, if you get, you get home at nine o'clock, it's just like, fuck, I got to, three hours from now, I got to ingest a 50 gram protein. Fuck. Like I wanted to do it. If I'm going out and fucking eating and dropping some coin, I want it to be the end. The finale of the night. Yeah. Now that I don't drink, you know, I'm not drinking. It's just, fuck, it's. There's now, yeah, I can. I, I, I used to love to, you know, have dinner and have that bottle of wine before dinner, and then, you know, and the bottle with dinner, with bottle with dinner, and then that was always should be a half a bottle, you know, because you're eating, you're not fucking drinking. And then you have, you know, your glass and then another half bottle still sitting there, and then you. That was like my, my dad. My mom, when we used to go to church, and we'd go to this place called Cymax. It was down by McLeod, or it was down by Great Lakes Steel. I don't know if it was an E course or if it was in Rouge. But it was this little place called Cymax. I used to always get the breaded veal cutlet. But I remember they'd have shit like fucking fried frog legs. And, mm. But I just remember, like, my, my, my dad, you know, always having like the extra three cups of coffee and 17 cigarettes while we just sat there fidgeting around dying to leave right oh uh, yeah but 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 then it was then it was in the car and, and take a drive to the irish hills you know a little, little drive away from the fucking urban city that you know to to, to, to go to the irish hills and drive around and Come back and mom would have that black fucking roast pot with the roast and the carrots and the peas and the, you know, the potatoes. And, you know, you'd have your, your roast dinner when you got home. In, At in, five. In, In At fucking, five. Yeah. In wing tips. You or dad? Oh, fucking us, man. And it was like it was. I, I was just. You didn't. You didn't even fucking. Like, you knew you were going to church on Sunday, and motherfucking. If your shoes weren't on the landing, fucking with a spit shine on them. Oh god! If, when, and your ass went to bed. You were getting woke up, and fucking. You better get the fucking. Get the fucking. Uh, Shine those motherfuckers up. Wow, you learned early to do that shit, huh? Yeah. That's why I got Cordova. Always got Cordova fucking shoes. Because Cordova, the black man, those motherfuckers, man, they, they, it, Cordova's hard to throw a spit shine on, but those black motherfuckers, man, you got to spit shine them bitches. A little bit of the kiwi. Uh, yeah. Wax. Yeah. That Rip- was always a thing, too. Your, my, your, dad, your dad and my dad would have. The black, the brown, and the Cordova. All three in the little wooden box, little shine box. Mm-hmm. Remember one time I told my dad, go get your shine box. He shot me, beat me up. Beat you, beat, beat you with the gun. <laughs> Motherfucker. Keep him here. <laughs> Rip Rogers, Smokey Johnson says, Probert is an absolute animal when it came to fighting. Great power forward, too. But don't sleep on Larry Robinson fighting Larry Robinson's fighting ability either. Elite defenseman who could absolutely beat the brakes off the best of them like Dave Schultz. And I have here, I don't have much memorabilia, but there is a Larry Robinson signed nice. Canadians puck. I've got a game worn condom of his somewhere there. Nice. Man. That's the post game. You know, I've still done nothing with that Gretzky card. I showed you that, didn't I? Yeah. I showed you that. Yeah. I've done nothing with it. I've not had it graded. 
or anything. It sits somewhere. It's in and, the pl- it's in plastic though, right? Yeah, it's in a it's in the holder in the fucking, and everything. The, I just, the gimmick, right? God damn it! If I don't know what to do with this thing, Steve, bring up the last one of these that went out to auction. The Gretzky rookie card. This is the uh, now there were two because Tops was the U.S. card company, and then OPC was the Canadian. Is that what that version. is? Canadian. And this is the Canadian card. Uh, Steve, see if you can find the. Well, you know, right there is fucking Gretzky seventy card. cents on the dollar. See, so say so here, this is this says on Etsy going for six hundred. Is is this a but, is, no move it? No, it's it's fucking a, it's one hundred and ninety nine thousand, right? It says yeah, this is one hundred and ninety nine thousand bucks, doesn't it? It did. It's that's what it said on eBay or Google, whatever he's on. For God's sake, there was one news story. So that could I be saw. worth two hundred grand. That, that card. I mean, it could be. And had it graded or anything so you're like me you're like me you you fucking buy a, a lottery ticket for the 1.1 billion dollars and it's fucking and you sit- don't check the ticket yeah i don't, I don't even say I, i'll check the ticket the next time i go to buy a lottery ticket because nobody will hit it right then, then i'll know nobody has hit it so i'll go oh fuck nobody's hit it you know i'll, I'll have them run this fucking you know I always, because the the deal is, I know that I'm not going to win the billion dollars. Right. You know, I know I'm not going to win that, but I'd like to get like that, like 1.6 where you get everything but the, you know, the Powerball or one of those fucking gimmicks. Just like after taxes, you'd get, you know, probably 800 or whatever. And then that way there, I could just not, that that, that would be enough to... Like just do nothing for yeah years. Expect I mean I was going through like in in our in our heyday because I was number one I was on the fucking road all the time, and when I started making some coin fucking I would just put everything on the American Express. If you if you have a a, a business a platinum business. They send you a breakdown of everything. It'll say restaurants, hotels, rental cars. Like everything is just it's broke down and you just give it to your accountant. So, but, you know, like an average American Express bill was $25,000 a month. And I just looked, our American Express bill came the other day. It was fucking $2,200. Oh, and like I did, the old days. No, that's what I said. I said, man, I said, fuck. Like, I just told him, I told my, my wife, I said, fuck. I said, what the fuck, man? She goes, well, she goes, number one, Mr. fucking $300 a bottle of wine out at the fucking restaurant no longer is the fucking in our lives, <laughs> you know? So she said, and she said, to get, to get the Omega Man out of the fucking house is, you know. Yeah, now. Yeah, I just these days. I don't. I you know today I I, I for those of you that don't know, um, uh, I said I want to fucking blast this to the world, but um, my wife had um, my wife took a. If anybody's ever been to the French Virgin Islands, there's a place. Uh, in the British, uh, Brit- British, no, the British, it's the British Virgin Islands. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's called the Baths, and it's uh, the best way to explain it. It's a bunch of fucking like rocks and caves and shit that, throughout time, human beings and the elements have made these fucking rocks slick as fuck. Mm. And there's water that fucking gets on them, and it's it's basically just some place to just go get hurt. Like me in the Hudson River, slipping yeah. on the rock. Yeah, and my wife yeah. fucking was, T had gotten ahead of him, us a little bit, and she went to like, s- snatch him because he was like going into an area there there was some water and she was didn't know what, what the depth of it was. And 
I watched in slow motion just her fucking feet just, and she just perpendicular fucking just landed mm. on her hip on the fucking rocks. And fuck, she just sat like, I mean, like, I thought she fucking maybe conked her head because she didn't move. She just laid there and then she was like, oh. I was like, oh, fuck. And I, I shouldn't even be in this thing because I don't even fit. Like, I'm pushing my way through shit and I'm ripping my fucking skin off my shoulders. And I'm like, who the fuck? This is like, remember when I, went, I, was, when I went to Rome and they said, this is the catacombs. And we walked and I looked in there and I went, oh, fuck that. Like, okay, good. Catacombs. Check. <laughs> Bucket list. <laughs> kind of like Chevy Chase when they go up to the fucking Grand Canyon. <sighs> Okay, let's get in the car. Okay. <laughs> exactly. So, um, you know, I, I I get her up. I'm thinking like, like, like babe, like, are you, uh, can you walk? She goes, ah, oh, fucking man. She goes, man, I, I, I hurt myself. I said, well, can you walk? I said, Just, I, I can't carry you through, out of here because I can't get, I'm too big with me. And she fucking gutted through it. And, you know, we got out to the boat. And we got back and then that, Next, like 6 a.m., she had to use the restroom. We were st- and uh, there was a, like a, a night light that was uh, around the, like, there was like the bedroom. Then there was like the, the, the like a, a, a <coughs> kind of a hot tub. And then the, the, there was a, a walk in closet. Then beyond that was another, uh, uh, a toilet that was in a, a separate room, and then the, across from that was a, a big stand-up shower. So I watched her, you know, walk walk in, and when she was coming back, I just I looked, and as she walked by that uh, light, I was like, "What the fuck?" I said, "Baby, I said, turn that fucking lamp on." She turned the lamp on it, and fucking it looked like she got hit with a fucking fastball already was turning purple mm. right on her hip bone so uh obviously she you know she fucked, fucked herself up she never got it checked and then as time went on it just got worse and she'd run up and down the bridges and run the beach and do all this shit and it just the last six eight months she just was just like she was it was kind of a constant nagging she'd do pilates she'd come home and women just don't ice I don't know why. Uh, I've just never, I've never met a woman that like this. Like, you know what? I'm gonna put a fucking bag of ice on me because that's just what you do. And uh, or people in general. I think if you're an athlete, you know, you like this whole immersion thing. I remember fucking being in college, and they would put you in the whirlpool, and then they would, it, they would fucking, the water would be freezing cold. And then they would fucking right next to it would be an ice machine that made ice like at the theater, uh-huh. and they would just fucking with a scooper just be dumping fucking this ice into this whirlpool. Yeah, the ice and bath it, after the yeah, and that after fucking after ice would just be yeah. banging the fuck out of you, and and you know it's just like anything else. You know they they do this the three minute fucking oh it you know, changes your life. I'm thinking, I don't know, man. I'm thinking. That fucking that, that that fucking shit from college put the marathon man into me. Is it safe yet? <laughs> like fuck, man. Like I don't like a cold shower. Fuck that. Yeah, but you'll fucking yeah. You know what? Obviously, I'm not getting the benefits of that. You know. So, but uh, as time went on, you know, it just got worse and worse, and she just went to uh, we have a, a, a friend of ours that's. Uh, uh, old school orthopedic that's on beach side and he, he's down in Ormond and um no he's not he's not beach side he's he got to go over the bridge but he's down in Ormond he's got an old office that's you know been there for a hundred years and he's got an x-ray mm-hmm. machine and he x-rayed yeah and lo and behold she had a crack right across the top of her her bone up in her pelvis and, uh, on the femur so she had to go get in and get a hip replacement and like you know she she went in on 
Tuesday and had the, no, she went Wednesday and had the surgery. Mm -hmm. So Tuesday we're sitting there and she was, I could just tell, man, she's like real quiet. I said, yeah, what's up, man? She said, I'm really fucking scared and I don't want to have, you know, I don't want to have the fucking, the piece of like, that's not me. Like I don't want some, some fucking prosthetic fucking thing in my fucking body. And I'm thinking, I said, well, I said, I said, can I, can I give you my explanation and my reasoning for it? And she said, yeah, I'd, I'd like to hear what you have to say. And I said, well, I said, the way I look at it, I said, thank God we have modern medicine. Because as we go right now, if you didn't have the option of having your hip replaced, your quality of life would continue to spiral as it has the last eight, eight months. I said, you know, she said, well, you waited so long to get your knee replaced. And I said, yeah, I waited fucking 20 years probably, you know, later than I should have, but they would have never fucking gave me a, a knee replacement when I was fucking 40. And I said on the same, in the same token, I said, once you get a knee replacement, I mean, just, I, I worked like once or twice after the knee replacement, even those, I mean, and I did nothing, you know, I did my five moves, but people don't realize, man, I was fucking, I, 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 there's a post that I did and there's like three pictures of me and there's a picture of me like before my knee operation and oh, I have this, the stages of the knee the I fucking, remember that I had this yeah. withered it looks like it looks like my arm is coming out of my groin you know it's just and it's all bent in and I mean it's like the fucking the Ichabod crane fucking leg and I'm thinking to myself like Oh, he was lazy, and he only had five moves. I'm like, motherfucker, if I would have put that fucking knee on you, you'd have been in a fucking wheelchair and bitching and fucking eating fucking perks. Like, shut the fuck up. You don't know fucking what I put myself through. And you know what? And don't fucking, it's, it, don't be the guy in the airport that sees a military guy and says, thank you for your service. Thank you for thank you for fucking doing what you did, Mr. Nash, and entertaining us all these years. Fuck you. I did it because I got fucking paid, and I fucking love money. Period. Didn't do it for you. I promise. Yeah, but people can appreciate it. They can you appreciate it. You had an impact it. on people's lives. Yeah, but I, you you know, I, I need to be. I, I, I haven't been cantankerous. I haven't been grumpy. I haven't been a fucking curmudgeon. It's been a fucking this whole show. Today? I, Today? Yeah, this okay, whole show. Today. So okay. I got to fucking, say, I got to get it in there. I don't want anybody to think that fucking tomorrow morning they can go fucking walk on my lawn. Because I'll fucking shoot them. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfuckers. <sighs> that fucking, so, that, that landscaping crew, they fucking, <laughs> they make fucking, they, they, they make another fucking 7 a.m. stop by. I'm going to come out there with a fucking Fenzy and fucking start fucking shooting double buck. <laughs> we don't know what happened to Octavio. He was, he was know, pushing just, the cutter, the lawnmower. You know, fucking uh, somebody shooting fucking slugs out of the fucking side of the house there. Eh? So the long and short of it is she had the surgery. It was yeah. a success. Yep. She's recovering. I mean, this is day one. This is tough. Day one. This is... Well, I mean, she came home. We came home yesterday. Mm -hmm. and with the, and of course, I mean, God forbid if anybody, like, you know, you can tell motherfuckers a thousand times, we really don't fucking like, like, I understand that she has to get a surgery, but can, you know, can I get the 10, the 10 p.m. schedule? <laughs> no. What was it, 6 a.m.? No. Oh, was fuck. It? It, was, it was 8 be there three hours early i'm fucking two hours it's like i don't even go to bed no don't bother fuck man it's i'm, I'm watching <clears> sports <throat> center and fucking i'm like ah oh, fuck it. at this point i gotta be up in fucking a half hour i said let me go in here and fucking drink some i, I drink this herbal life uh, uh tea metabolic tea i drink my herbal life tea every every morning when i get up 
And uh, so I drank my I drank my fucking tea, and as soon as that tea, and it, uh, they say like put like a fucking teaspoon in there. I fucking put like three rounded fucking tablespoons of this shit in there, man. And it fucking geeks the fuck out of me. But I'll tell you one thing. If there's any fucking thing near the fucking colon, it's going to sim- stimulate in 15 minutes. And you're going to, because the last thing I'm doing is driving all the way fucking across Orlando to Celebration. You know how fucking that drive is. Mm-hmm. You got to go fucking through Sanford, through downtown. Through fucking the Disney fucking bullshit. You they, get your they, express for a little bit of it, which is nice. Yeah, now, but yeah. you're coming. You're still coming out of it in Orlando, and you got to go through. Yeah. You still got to go through that six miles, six miles, or seven miles once you come out of the express from there to fucking exit sixty four. So we, you know, God knows I've been to that fucking hospital long enough myself getting fucking cut on. Mm. But uh, so. Shout out to Dr. Brad Holman for fucking uh, taking care of my wife. And uh, so, so of course, because, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just one of those guys that's just a fucking a, a go-getter, you know, just, a, you know, a, just on top of everything. So I have, when we get home last night, or five o'clock, whatever it was. Um, I got, we have no food in the house and I have to build and put on two of these safety, like the, the toilet has to be like raised, like, because you can't bend down. You can't, right. you, because you can't have the hip, the hip can't be lower than the knee and all that. There's all these mm. fucking, so, you know, a raised and I've got toilet. like, yeah, raised toilet with the fucking arm gimmicks. Mm. You know, mm. And then, you know, the, so of course I, I buy the, I buy two different ones because I don't, I, I you know, I don't know which one's going to be. And, you know, we need one upstairs and then one down, um, in the in the living room area, like off the TV room, that we have a half bath down there, so I've got to put one down there for. So, and I'm that I'm that guy that's got like one fucking channel grip fucking wrench and a screwdriver. Bob Nash is shaking his head like this right now. Yeah, Bob Nash is saying a damn right because there's a guy somewhere called a handyman. That oh, right, that's to- right. Yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't had, handy. I had no, him in my mind as as no, a massive fuck, tool set. No, oh. uh, uh, fucking people would, would talk about cars from when I was growing up. Yeah, uh, fucking four barrel. <laughs> uh, shut the fuck up and take it to the mechanic. <laughs> Guy's making a living. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you don't change your own oil. Fuck, dude, if I if I didn't have to, I wouldn't jerk my own cock. Fuck, oh, are you kidding me? I do. I send laund I send the laundry out. Now. Oh. I, 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 as I get older, I'm trying to do as little it, that absolutely. distracts me from my primary purpose on Earth. Lift weights, which is not. Yeah, clearly that's mine. Which get I fucking I had I had back today, so I had to wait for my mother in law to come. Because I had to I had to get my back work in, but I had to tie it as close as I could to the podcast, so I didn't I didn't want to take my 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 mother in law and make her stay. Yeah, she'll be down. It's like, you know, she's fucking seventy eight, so she'll be down at the fucking. I, I, I she and she won't fucking stay. We got a guest room. I'm like, mom, just fucking stay in the guest room. You know, I, I'm just gonna go home. Right. How far How far a drive is it? For? Oh, it's it's got to go over the Brits. Uh, Fuck two miles down to the bridge, over the bridge. Uh, she's got to go up about fucking quarter mile, and then fucking. So she's nearby. Right. Yeah, yeah, she's. It's probably eight miles from our house. I'm thinking she's in Georgia still. Then no, 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 no. When we when we uh, when 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 uh, her husband got um, older. It was like fucking like 
And, and on top of that, their their, their house that we that, that we owned was um, the area was slowly becoming uh, undesirable, and there was a, it, it was turning into a rental um, a rental community. Mm. And I was just like, and I I only like I think I paid like two twelve for the house, and the houses in there were going for like four fifty, mm-hmm. like in that range. I was just like, I need to fucking you know, cash this motherfucker out, and uh, before it's it's worth fucking one twelve, and if, uh, if it's going the other way, yeah. yeah, it was going the other way. So I I just I basically told him like. I'm 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 going to ask you guys, you know, I'm going to give you the option to you know, come down to Florida and live. I said uh and you can tell me no, but just realize that I'm selling a fucking house. <laughs> You're going somewhere. <laughs> yeah, so it's like it's up to you. I'll fucking send you one of those pods you can put your shit in it fucking like I'll fucking pick you up a crib down here. But uh as far as that one, that ain't an option. <laughs> right. You know, so. Well, speedy recovery to Tamara. We all, yeah. uh, we all send our love. I tell you, man, and, and, and for, this is, I think, our 37th season together. And uh, that we, I, we separated for like a year or two for a while when I was out of my fucking mind eating somas. And she just had enough and told me that she'd. She had to go someplace, so I went went to my loft in Buckhead and realized that I really want to be fucking single at forty two. Right. So, uh, but yeah, she's been taking care of my fucking broke ass. Yeah, I've been sitting around fucking in that recliner all these years, you know. Yeah, you're the one with this re- being replaced, 16 yeah. knees and you know, neck I mean, and just, shoulder. And, yeah. I mean, I got fucking, I got so much hardware in my fucking body. I just, it actually, you know, it was, it was nice to, and you know what the thing is too is, is she, we were coming home uh, for, and she, you know, and she just looked at me and like really with like, not like, just like, hey, by the way, you know, thanks but like that really heartfelt, like, thank you for the, like, thank you for, you know, the, I was just like, wow, am I that much of a fucking piece of shit that I don't do nothing? Like this is that this is, you know, and I look at it, I'm like, yeah, yeah, you are like you fucking, you know, it's, it's, you're a fucking selfish motherfucker. Well, be or, that as it may, you, you had a career that kept you yeah, on the road for, yeah, you know, but, nine tenths of the year and. Yeah, but at the same time, man, it's you know you like, and, and, like you know, and then it was I was going to WrestleCon, like I was going to fucking see Paul and fucking HBK Saturday night at WrestleMania. I was gonna watch the fucking, you know, I was gonna get on the cans. I was gonna tell them fucking cold suck my cock. I was doing all these things. You're gonna sit in gorilla. Yeah, I was fucking you know, just drinking bush, bushwhack it. Suck my cock. So, um, who is this? But uh, McAfee would have lost his mind. Yeah, great. Hey, McAfee, talk about my cock. So, um, I just said, I just, I thought about. It. I'm just like, I don't trust having anybody like taking care of her because. All the doctor kept saying, our, our surgeon kept saying was, whatever you do, don't fucking fall. Whatever you do, don't fucking fall. Mm. I'm like, what is my mother-in-law going to do at fucking 78 years old if she starts to stumble? Mm-hmm. If she fucking starts to stumble around me, fucking, I'm, she's going to get fucking, she might get a broken rib for me snatching her ass, but she ain't going to fucking, she ain't going to fall. Right. She ain't going to fall down the stairs with my big ass behind her. Mm-hmm. You know, so... No, it's just. Uh, well, no, you're doing the right thing, and you're. Uh... No, and it's like it, it, it. But the thing was, like, I just sat there and it, I'm just like, like, what a fucking asshole, knowing, like, that your wife's gonna go through this, and you're thinking, ah, she, you know, 
she should be all right in the fucking week, right? They fucking hammered a fucking, fucking you know, a, a fucking implant fucking into her bone marrow cavity, into femur. her fucking yeah. femur, and carved out the other side and put a fucking dish in there to fucking, so she had, I'm like, a, yeah, like, just an eight-inch incision on the side of your fucking leg. You should be able to kick out of that in three days. Let me go fucking sign. Oh, get the fuck out of here. There'll be more signings. <laughs> or there's, or not. There's only one time. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's what I said. It's just like, you know what, man? What the fuck? You, you know, I don't need to do anything anymore. This is this drive, this hour, this mile and a half drive. It takes a lot out of you. Oh, so Jesus. Getting you down here. I mean, fucking hell. Well, and, yeah. and and on top of that, fucking, I, I basically watched highlight clips of 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 Raw because I I just didn't. I had so much shit. I had I mean, good luck fucking going out and finding like the toilet seats and all this shit. Because I'm thinking like every place on earth, CVS, Walgreens, I fucking went for the first time in my life into a Walmart's. Is that where you found it? No, oh. they didn't have shit. I'm like, I'm trying, it's like she was doing something and I was like out. I'd left the house and I was just out. Like, and I, I was gonna, you know, I was gonna go out and fucking, I was like, that was the, uh, the, I was the hunter. I was gonna go out and bring back the fucking, the kill, you know. Mm -hmm. the, the two fucking raised toilet seats with the bars and, you know, walkers and all this shit. I was going to come. I came home empty handed. Mm -hmm. But you did get to visit a Walmart. Let's talk about the social experiment that is the Walmart. How far into the store was it? Was it oh, right through the door where you so realized I, I, you were I, I, in another no. world? Oh, the parking lot. <laughs> the fucking parking. It, it's like. I don't go to any place with that many cars ever. It's like fucking going to Yankee. It's like going to fucking like a, like a Tigers game or something. And there is no good time to go anytime I, mean, I have mother seen a Walmart. And, and, you know, like, I didn't even go over to where the food section was. I was just, you know, and it's. It's so hodgepodge. Like, there's people stocking all over the place, but it looks like it's the most un-OCD crew on earth. Like, nothing's, like, fucking really lying. It's, like, for somebody that's OCD, like, I'm like, oh, like, let me fucking just fix these fucking cans before I right. walk any further. Should come right to the edge. <laughs> And uh, so, I, so I, I walk, I walk through the fucking, you know, I, and there's three sets of doors. So I walk up, I've never been there and I read and it says out only, out only. I'm like, okay. So I walk, you know, to the left and it says in, I'm like, all right, fucking task one. And there's the fucking Walmart greeter, young guy, about 25 years old i'm like where would i find uh orthopedic raised toilet seats with bars like that kind of a ah, the hospital ah, maybe like over there oh okay what is this fucking three football fields of fucking over there thanks buddy so i walk back and there's an older uh heavier uh woman and I'm, 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 I'm so I'm, I, there's a young kid that's next to her, and I'm like, oh, man, I, I don't want to be rude and like walk past this young kid because I know he doesn't know Dick because he looks like he's about 12. I said, if anybody knows where this is, this 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 lady here will. Based and on she, what? She just looked, um, 
Like she might have used a seat like that? No, she looked like no. she was just conscientious. Okay. She looked like she, I mean, she looked like she was an employee. Everybody else looked like they were just there fucking, you know, getting paid for Day being players. stoned. <laughs> yeah, they were just there for, I'm stoned, I might as well go to work. She looked like, okay, like, you know. And then we fucking, it was that magical moment that you fucking, you just say, thank you fucking God so much for 30 fucking years of TV. She turned around and her fucking, she doing it like that and she fucking, because it's not like you're going to not notice me. Right. You know, I'm fucking 6'10". Even though everybody, you know, wants to say I'm 6'7". You're 6'7". Okay, I'm six seven. Whatever the fuck is that a thing? I've, I've never heard. Oh of yeah, you, you're never your fucking true height until the other day when I was at, when that fucking guy in the Deadpool mask did the fucking face the face flop and these fucking cops you know came in there and fucking these two black cops walked over me and they went, God damn, you're a lot bigger than I thought you'd be. I'm saying, oh, you you don't think I'm six seven? They're like, what are you seven foot? I'm like, no, because I'm six three. I'm at your chin. I'm like, I know. I know, but I'm only six seven. So, so she recognizes um, you. So she yeah. recognizes me. She goes, "Oh my God, Kevin Nash, because you were one of my favorites." I said, well, "What did I do to change that?" She says, "No, you're still one of my favorites." I said, "Oh, okay. I thought I had heat with you." She said, "No." She said, "What can I do for you?" I said, "Okay." I said, "I'm looking for like." Can my I said. Let me just go back. My wife's going to have a, a hip replacement, and she needs to have, like, bars and a, one of those, like, big, tall seats. Like, it has got to be five inches. You She's didn't want to like, say, your idol needs a new shitter. No. Yeah, yeah. I I got bad knees. I need to fucking prop my ass up because I can't fucking, I can't, I can't, I can't fucking dip down to the hole. So, uh, I mean, it was just like, I was, I was finishing my sentence and she's basically like taking me by the hand and walking me, and we fucking walk for like three minutes. <laughs> like she, ta- I'm like I'm thinking, I could have followed the breadcrumbs. You know, this is like this. This is the only way I'm finding this fucking. She walks me over there. She goes, "Well, if they be, if we had them, they'd be right here." And she looks down and it says ninety nine bucks and sixty nine bucks, and she takes some gimmick and she scans them. She goes, "No, we didn't. We, we don't even have any in the bag." She goes, "Because they're pretty good on stock." And she goes, "We don't have them." And I'm like, "Holy fuck, they don't have them!" So I get out in the car, I Google, and there's a a medical supply place, and it's in Port Orange. So it's like on my way home, I'm like. Fucking Saturday, it's three o'clock. Like, there's no fucking way that this, you know, a medical place isn't going to be. I get there, the world's most handicapped parking ever in front of a fucking strip mall store is this fucking place. So, your half a football field of fucking doubled handicapped parking before you can. And there's nobody in the handicap parking, but there's a couple of cars around me. So I'm thinking, this is just, I mean, somebody like me. And as I'm walking towards it, I'm realizing there's no lights on in this place. And I'm thinking, I'm like, are they out of business? I walk up to it. I fucking I peer in it. It's fucking loaded. I can see the fucking Seats. shit, the shitters and everything over on the left hand side. And I fucking look at the door. It's got the fucking times. Saturday closed. Why? Like who the fuck closes on Saturday? Why? Is it owned by Jews? Do you know? I mean, that's the only reason, right? Or... No, and I, I saw it when I came. So Sunday, I go, and it's fucking closed again. But they had the same hours. So then I fucking said, "All right, it's going to be open Monday." Now it's fucking crunch time. Because we're going for surgery on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And there's, I mean, it's like, fuck, if I don't have a fucking raised toilet seat, I am, we're fucked. So I go Monday and I said, oh, I said, fuck, I said, I came, I came by Saturday, you guys are closed. And she, I said, 
And then I came yesterday, you guys are closed. And she said, I said, fuck, I said, I thought maybe. And she goes, well, you know, I'm just me and my husband run this place. And, you know, if you work seven days a week, you don't have much of a life. And he wants to retire. So I've pretty much just uh, kind of cut it back. And it's kind of uh, on Sundays, we just kind of do on appointments only. And I said, well, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, she's, you know, getting everything for me and shit and giving me my, my options. And I'm thinking like, like to just shut up and let's you just get the fuck out of here. Like, you know, like just don't thank her. And, but no, not me. I have to fucking say, you know, it would probably be helpful since everybody Googles to maybe change that Sunday on your ad to appointment only. This is such a Larry David moment. <laughs> it is. Enthusiasm. Go I am so Larry David. And then I just I just catch myself like pretty, 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 pretty much an asshole. So and then I, I said, I said, would it be okay if I, I pulled my car up and, you know, like the the, the fucking uh, the bars that you, you know that that you, you, you know, the, the dip bars that you sit mm-hmm. down with are fucking. I mean, you know, like those with the second. It, it would have been fucking with my shoulders. It would probably would have. I probably would have been out of commission. So I. Uh, and then I've got on top of that, I got a, that Mustang GT, so it's like not exactly fucking trunk space. But oh, so where are you I, putting that? Well, I I, I like got a ski rack. Some of the shit behind you, can, you you couldn't put a fucking a human's head behind my seat. No, no. Um, I've tried. And uh, why don't you take I, the truck? I, uh, that that, that truck the truck has. I haven't ran the truck in so long. I probably have to fucking jump it and then i'd have to leave it running and it's like i'm not fucking with that i told my wife i said you know what i said the sentimental fucking value of of that truck and i i know that i mean you know t went and fucking took his driver's lessons in it and everything else i said but just like that thing gets eight miles to the gallon premium i said i would just so much Rather, rather have like a '64 Galaxy 500 convertible, or a fucking Caddy, like a '75 Eldorado convertible, like because we don't have a convertible anymore. Because I, 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 I sold my, you know, I traded my convertible in. I got a hard time now. Mm-hmm. And then, I, then I'm thinking to myself, like, that's exactly what you need, is a convertible. Because it's freezing fucking cold during the winter time when it used to fucking be moderate and you could put drop the top and it was beautiful, and then it goes from that to eighty three, and it's like fucking you put the top down and those fucking it's like seventy five L dog fucking air blows in those things, so I'm like, like just fucking you don't need a toy, mm-hmm. like you know you don't need a toy, just just have just. Let somebody get some fucking pleasure out of that fucking truck, and maybe so. That's my my next move is to. Uh, I might put it on. Maybe I'll put it on sale on our show. Yeah, but I mean it's. I, I've got a buddy that 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 has a uh, performance. He's a mechanic that that does like you know, performance like chips cars and does all that fucking shit. And he said I could I could sell his that the truck out of his uh, shop. I could set it out in front. He put it in the bay every night. And, you know, we put a for sale sign on it. I said, "Fuck!" I said, "You know, if it fucking if it if it, if it means something to somebody, I said I'll fucking sign the dash." I was gonna just I was just gonna you say. Know, you I mean, it's 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 uh, it's diesel mine, sticker on the doors. It's, yeah, it, it says. You know, I mean, the, the the only fucking person that ever fucking owned that truck is Kevin Nash, and it's titled ninety three Kevin Nash. So yeah, I don't know. I that probably fucking you know take it from thirty to twenty with because <laughs> I owned it. No, come send my curmudgeon fucking, Jeez. and it, it needs to mean that you know. I, I used to fucking the thing used to be like 
cherry as fuck. Now it just, you know, it just sits and collects fucking pollen. You can still smell uh, Road Wild 98 in the, uh, in the, uh, in the driver's smells seat. Like fucking, uh, smells like Uncle fucking Ed's ass. Well, Kev, you, something with the toilet seat and the hip replacement, something you're not going to need to worry about for a little while, clearly, but our listeners should, is Blue Chew. Wow. Um, this segment uh, sponsored by our friends at Blue Chew. Let's talk about sex, guys. Remember the days when you were always ready to go? Well, now you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. Listen up. It's BlueChew.com. Blue Chew is a unique online service. It delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. The best thing about this, other than the uh, infallible effect it has on you, is the process. You go to BlueChew.com. You consult briefly with a, medical, a licensed medical provider. Once you're approved, bang, no pun intended, you're going to get the prescription and uh, your supply is going to be shipped to you within days, okay? The tablets are made in the USA, prepared, shipped directly to you in discreet packaging. So it's all done online, okay? There's no trips to the drugstore, no awkward discussions with doctors or anything like that. Super easy and get the performance that you remember from your youth or that you've always wanted, okay? They want to help you have better sex. So go discover your options at BlueChew.com. Just chew it and do it. And we've always got something special for the listeners Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code NASH at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code NASH, to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this week's Dear Sexy, Kevin. Two letters, for anyone who doesn't know, two actual Dear Abby letters. But what if Kevin Nash was asked for his opinion uh, I guess from, my judgeship didn't go too well. Well, we had two back to back, so we needed to move. <laughs> no, that's you know, we got to cycle another one in. Yeah, no worries. Um, no, the, the the judgeship was great last week when one of the determining factors for the sentence was, and she's attractive. So well, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean it's got to count. I, I I try not to fucking lie in life. No, you shouldn't. So, dear sexy, please help save my marriage. My wife of five years discovered an internet browser history of 13 web pages I had clicked on the previous day. The pages were of women's sexy lips. My wife is calling it porn and, quote, a gateway to porn. I feel guilty about it, but I told her it isn't pornography. I think it's a fetish. She says I'm using that word to get off the hook. Will you please tell her that this is probably a fetish? Our sex life has not been the same since you discovered the images on the computer. What can we do about it in a way that will strengthen our marriage? That's signed by not guilty as charged. It's a very tame thing as compared yeah. to what he could be doing in the world and on the Remember internet. Remember when you know, earlier in the show we went, we went on our, our foot thing? Or we had the old foot fetish. Oh, yeah. We even raided some celebrity yeah. feet and everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, um, God, I mean, I don't know. Nowadays, it's like there's so, I mean, with fillers and fucking all the bullshit that these girls, half the girls look like fucking, you know, like a duck. Yeah. You know, it's like, I don't know. Uh, if it's should with, she be should she be bothered by this? If it was looking? just lips, I mean, it would be one thing if it was like a like the face of the person and the lips. But if it was just pictures of the lips, what if it was if she would have looked and it was thumbs? I mean, right. it's it, we know every like I've. We we had a it conversation. Would explain his drawer had, full of thumbs. Yeah, we had we, we had a conversation Holy about um, uh, some fucking billionaire, and you know, like everybody's everybody's got their own kinks. Um, obviously, this guy's thing is lips. You know, so I I I really think that she's. Um, They've probably been married for a while. I think it's the insecurities of, um, 
And then again, I, I don't know. I mean, she could have, she'd be one of those girls that has those pencil thin lips that's very conscious, you know. So it's then, making her feel insufficient right. because so it would the be, it would be the, it, it would be like somebody that was uh, maybe like an A cup and, you know, she goes on the, on her husband's computer and here are you know jugs.com yeah exactly so then it it makes her feel, feel inferior so i can't say with i mean i'm sure that would be the reasoning that, that, that she probably just doesn't she's not uh happy or satisfied with with her lips you know so right like you catch one catches their wife on a website of like 14 inch schlongs you get, you know, what are you going to do? You go. I can get a reduction. I can get, get a reduction. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get the reduction, baby. Fuck! I didn't know. Got to get it somewhere. All right. So, second letter, dear sexy. My husband wears a hairpiece. Unfortunately, it doesn't look very real. Nearly every time we are in a public place, I notice somebody staring or laughing at it. I have talked to him about it only a couple of times, but each time he tells me how attached he is to it, no pun intended, and how good it feels on his head. I want him to be happy, but I do not want him to be publicly ridiculed. Should I throw it away? Signed, wife of a man with a secret. Now, this is one where she's got a fucking, she's got a hold up on the, on the bootay. She's like, dude, I, I can't fucking, I cannot fucking be with you in any kind of intimate fucking way whatsoever with that fucking ruck on your head. I'm, I'm, and I'm just telling you this because obviously you're, you're not in on it, but it's fucking, it, it's, a, it's a fucking joke. Everybody else thinks it's a joke. You might be attached to it. Get unattached. Yeah. Shave, shave your head. Fucking Savalas did it. Make it work. Yeah, come it on. It can be cool. You can just, you can always cut your, like, if I lost, if, if I was losing my hair, wouldn't shave my head, I'd be just fucking cut it down with a one. And I would just wear it just as tight as I possibly could. And you have some, you have some trace of hair, right? Yeah, just, you know, I, I don't think I'd want to be bald, <clears throat> but, you know, I say that because I've got shark ears. You know, my ears, if I can, I mean, they, Ears fucking stick out. You know, Dave, you can't even see my ears from the side of your profile. I have gladiator ears. Okay. You can't fucking grab my ears like in a fight. In a fight, can't go for the ear. I have to go no. for the eyeball. I was, I was built up like a shark. All right. Um, all right. Well, you know, the. As the... opposed to a jet. Exactly. Very right. good. Who gets that reference out there? We'll see. Um, Kevin Long, a fan of '60s musical theater. Uh, if you can maybe yes throw out a Pippin reference at some point, uh, be very impressive. You know we are Maria. I've just met a girl named Maria. Oh, the day, the minute seemed like hours. The hours last forever. Spanish Harlem. He yells Maria up into an apartment building. Yep. I mean, Natalie you know, Wood. Just getting one looking at. I think somebody's unmuted on the crew there. I'm getting uh, getting some trickle, unless Kevin has somebody in the unit with him. No, nobody in this fucking unit. Um, all right, it's Jersey guy. I don't know. Maybe T might, T might be in there. I, I heard a laugh one time. I'm talking about it. Right. Jersey guy, Florida man, the tournament. We're in the semifinals. <clears throat> I think we're in the, um, it might be the final four right now, I think. And uh, so we have two stories that uh, we're Steve... going into. We're, I, I, I think it's going to be hard with the the shit subpoena, but let's 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 do it. Oh yeah, I mean it's. it's I, not, I think it's... I have a winner predicted, but we'll see. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. What strikes you tonight? All right, so let's find um, a finals uh, a finalist in the Jersey division. Guy uses summons to wipe butt, then throws it at cop. Up against man charged with decapitating seventy four year old mother, and let's not forget he was laying on the body and singing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to say that even though Houston was ranked number one with the shit, I'm gonna have to go with the decapitation line on your mom. 
Absolutely. And next week, they will take on the winner of, in the Florida division, man shoots his mom and daughter after allegedly revealing his desire to date his teen daughter versus man tried to circumcise two-year-old cousin while babysitting. They're both pretty Florida, man. Hmm. I, I think the murder is, is fucking... Man shoots his mom and daughter yeah. after allegedly revealing... Did he fans. kill him or just shoot him? Um, well, this says shoots. We can always go to the uh, the actual item here. Let's see. Um, Still, uh, that's, 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 that's more... I mean, well, circum- circumcision, I circumcision wouldn't be sexual. It would be medical. It wouldn't be like... I like guess not pedophile or anything it's just yeah like a, you know you it's buy the medical it's like do-it-yourself it rabbi just, kit yeah it's and... fucked up i think shooting the fact that he wanted to date his younger daughters that's more that's way more fucked up and he shot both of them so i'm gonna i'm gonna pick the fucking i'll take the shooter over the fucking snipper yeah, it looks like it, I think I think they lived. A Florida man is in police custody after a violent attack on his mother and teen daughter. Michael Banks uh, reportedly shot his mom, her friend, and his 17-year-old after he revealed his desire for an incestuous relationship with the teen. Um, according to the Tampa Bay Times, Banks told local police that he wrote a letter to his daughter insisting she enter into a relationship with him and not date anyone else. Then last Wednesday, the 42-year-old shot his 60-year-old mom and her 52-year-old friend, Josephine. So I guess they lived, but, uh, you know, listen, I, you know, some families, you know, go out to lunch, right. have cake. This is what goes on over there. All right. We'll see what happens next week in the finals, but we do have, um, I had 12 out of the 16 in the sweet 16. I oh, did. in, uh, in the NCAA. Yeah. I had Kentucky. They fucked me and Baylor fucked me. I think it was, I was, like it was my two. Well, 12 out of 16 is still, it's, it's 12 still out of 16 is good. remarkable. But my thing is I have Iowa State winning it all because like you play these pools and everybody jumps out like last year, everybody, you know, like we, I came in second or third and everybody else, like they just like, how much fun is it to pick the fucking one seeds to go into the, you know what I mean? Like you just pick the one seeds to go all the way through and then, you know, you kind of go on, okay, Connecticut won it last year. They probably won't repeat. So I'll pick Houston and anybody that they, they watched that Texas A&M Houston game was just like, fuck man. It, tech, it that was such a, and you knew that, 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 Houston was going to pull it out, but Texas A&M came back, took it to overtime. What if, I mean, just that mm. by far the best sporting event in the world is the NCAA tournament. The tournament, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's nothing that touches it. So or where's where's the money right now? Yeah, the money's, uh, yeah, Connecticut. Volunteers. Uh, What's six, Iowa State? Is yeah. Iowa State on there? Let's see. They have to. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. A plus. So I, I was. So, so Iowa State plays Illinois in this in this next round, and I have. I, and Illinois is on fire right now. They won the Big Ten, and they they're they're racking. Um, but I just man, I I I, I watched Iowa State play. Oh fuck. Four, four or five times this year, and nobody, and this is just complete basketball jargon, but nobody rotates to the ball. Nobody cuts off the drive. I mean, like, the, I always was was uh, a, a firm believer in, especially tournament time, when you're going and you're playing in these uh, arenas that are football arenas, you know, or, or, or larger arenas, than you're used to playing in where the corner shots uh, are really hard because when you when you have your shoot-arounds and you have practice, there's no people in it. 
So that it's a it's when when it, when those fucking those those crowds fill up, the perception of mm-hmm. shooting that ball is 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 fucked up. And I don't give a fuck if you get to the game, you know, get there an hour before the game game day. You know, it's like, you know, you, you can't drive a roofing nail up your fucking ass with a sledgehammer. So, but you do know that the fucking if you if you can play defense, and your defensive game is fucking. I think they're, I would say it's maybe 14th in the nation in defense. And um, you know your defensive game's going to be there. So, you know, I, that's that's my thought pattern on picking Iowa State. All right, well, we'll see what happens. Which means they've got to, they've got to get by Illinois then probably to get to the, to the, to the, uh, to the dance, they're going to have to, to get to the Final Four, they're going to have to get uh, by Connecticut. Right. All right. Well, we're getting there. We're at. Uh, what do we have? We're two weeks left. For the before the national this, championship game. Well, we, we're we, now. Nah, it's we'll. Uh, we went from from sixty four to thirty two. Right. And then we went to sixteen like, all in this weekend. So now we'll go to the elite eight. Right. This weekend. And then the following weekend will will be the final four. This is gonna we'll, this is gonna compete with WrestleMania for you. What will you be watching? I could tape WrestleMania. Tape the Re- games too. Wrest- nah. <laughs> now you'll hear about it, right? It'll be it'll be blown. That's what for people. You that's what people yeah. used to always say to me. You know, like, who was your favorite wrestler when you were a kid? I'm like. Well, fucking about ten years old, man. I I got the basketball Jones. I was, I was watching tape delayed fucking NBA games from fucking you know. That was, that was my fucking jam. Was was fucking ball. I didn't, and while I you know. watch next week, you should have a little bit of the nano infused Delta yeah. Nine THC sip and syrup from our friends at Get Blitz Lit A, the perfect companion for the final. Maybe film. I should. No, well, I think I, you got to keep got, your wits about you. This I got to take year. care. I got to take yeah. care of my wife. I, yeah, I don't. I don't need to be fucking yeah, off in fucking uh, la la land. You need to be ready for any kind of assistance that, uh, that going out and getting sometimes the so seat, man. Depending on, I think it's you know, if you've been if you've been getting stoned like I've been getting stoned for fucking a uh, couple of years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's going down memory lane before her very eyes. You're going to start to cry. <laughs> Minimum of 50. <laughs> so, um, but I think that as, you, as life progresses, like, granted, man, like the fucking the hydro fucking, like, you know, s- smoking fucking Mexican dirt weed. You know, back in the day when you got the fucking four finger bag for fucking thirty bucks, and I actually—I don't know if I've said this before on the show—but I actually thought that uh, people made the double albums just so you could clean your fucking weed in them, because that's you know every every fucking double album. I remember that Frampton comes alive every time I'd open that because that was like my jam that fucking summer in '75, and. uh I'd fucking open it up, man, and fucking it'd be seeds just. So, yeah. Many, many Frampton comes alive is. Uh... Yeah, go ahead. Hit me, Mickey. How about it? Mickey's with us tonight. I've been hey, calling you for the last few weeks. I, I think that what we've done here for your company deserves some kind of uh, maybe, maybe a, uh, if not statues. Well, yeah, but you just erected don't... in our. Mickey sends me the product, see? So. That's obviously... enough for you. Yeah, absolutely. So if you were to use the product, then you'd be like, "Bro, thank you so much for the hookup." How about that, a click? That, how about a click? A... This flavor, like, like, what would the flavor be? Yeah, I, 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 I can't fucking, I can't bastardize myself or, 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 or fucking prostitute myself when I've already fucking been a staunch advocate for the fucking key lime. Yeah, that's true. The key lime that's is the fucking. That's that's uh, once again. That's my fucking jam. Then we should go with the called Kev's key lime, something like that. All right, something to think about. But listen, let me tell it. 
Click lime. There you go. Click, Let's just tell everybody it's gotta that. It's got to be click key lime. Click key lime. There you there go. There we go. We can do that. I was, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, what? one thing about our ads is, see, the bottles are changed. The, 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 the bottle is, is kind of kind of got a uh, much cooler kind of, not that the old, the old bottles were kind of like, those are like the retros. The new ones have a more of a uh, high-end feel to them. No. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing it, Mickey. Um, I'm going to bring up next show. I'm going to bring, I'll bring down one of my bottles. Yeah, we'll hold it up during the ad. Exactly. Yeah. Well, if you don't know what Delta maybe Nine, I'll bring, uh, maybe I'll bring fucking the key lime and a prime down here, and fucking we can, we can, I'll do a little fucking key prime, and then fucking because it won't be like when RVD got fucking in trouble for fucking smoking on fucking YouTube. You're just drinking a soda. I'm just drinking a or, or, uh, an drinking energy a prime. drink. Yeah. And the beauty with that is, I, I fucking I get those types, those primes ice cold. I just I, I I put my key lime in it, give it a little shake ski. Boom. And you just sip. It's a sip and syrup, is what it is. For God's sakes, the Delta Nine THC sip and syrup. But if you don't know what it is, I'm going to tell you what it is. It's like THC on steroids. It's a syrup. You mix it in any beverage: tea, white soda. Kev's rocking it with the prime. Little as a teaspoon, we're talking here, because there's a fast onset, five to fifteen minutes. Nano infused means it goes right into your bloodstream, bypasses the liver, so uh, you don't have that breakdown process. Okay, it works like alcohol. Okay, you send it right down, and you start to feel the effects. Uh, this is not gas station Delta 8 bullshit. This is the real deal. THC Delta 9, folks. The THC you get from marijuana. If you're in Maryland, you can visit one of the Stay Lit Smoke Shops. Uh, but for the rest of us, it is legal to ship right from the Get Blitzed website to all 50 states without a med card as long as you're over 21. Right now, save 15%. So many people posting to us on uh, on Twitter showing us the checkout screen where they get that 15% off. By entering the code CLICK, K-L-I-Q, at checkout, go to get-blitzed.com. That's get-blitzed, B-L-I-T-Z-E-D.com, and try the Delta 9 THC Sip and Syrup Lit Aid from Get Blitzed at get-blitzed.com. Use the promo code CLICK, K-L-I-Q, save 15%. I'll, if Mickey sends me some more, I'll uh, I'll have it on the air with you here next week, and we'll... Uh, that, that, that'd be fine. We'll, we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it... Uh... Start start at the, in the pre show, yeah. Get the yeah. by the time I get to the blit get blitz date at nine thirty, it'll be all over the fucking dude. Point. I don't know what's gonna come out. We will give, yeah, give we, you a freebie that week, Mickey. Yeah, we won't. We won't fucking. I don't know though. I've I've, I've done it uh, several times, and I've never. It's so funny. Like people say, God, Nash was so fucking stoned, and I'll be like, okay, like I did that one, like. With with drinking diet iced tea, you know, like I'm I'm I'm, I'm drinking like unsweetened iced tea down here with with lemon in it, and I'm fucking stoned. Then I come down here fucking whacked, and I'm trying to remember fucking what my last fucking sentence was, and I don't get busted. I'm thinking, yeah, jeez, yeah, I'm more I'm more I'm more fucked up when I'm not fucked up. Right, and it's fifty years worth of that. That cover that you got. There. Yeah, there's some fucking brain cells that, between that and the chair shots and hashtag Ask Nash is what this is about, folks. We are going to uh, get questions for Kevin. This is how you do this on social media. Hashtag Ask Nash, and maybe your question will appear. You could always join us live here. You're going to see live fan questions. They've been with us since the pre-show. Um, and uh, you do that by going to clickthistv.com. Sign up, become part of the 11 Soft Club. It's like a family, man. Uh, the P says, question for you both. If WWE were to make a Legends House 2, who would you guys want to see in it, and would Big Daddy Cool join the house? I never miss an episode. Great job. No. You, there's not been enough money printed by the Mint to get Kevin to live with six other wrestlers on television for a month um, or however long it took, two weeks to shoot. I can tell you that. Am I wrong? If it was a fucking day, it'd be too long. Right. Who would be a good legend? That's alive right now? 
No, I'd actually go with with the deceased. I'd put Piper. No, Pat- you can't do that because you can't fucking you can't fantasy book the no, with a medium. Deceased. We have the Ouija. The uh, the, the medium will tell gotta, us what's going on. Uh, you got to go with. I would do Backlin, Dallas, Jake, Mick. Hmm. Barry Horowitz. Okay. Why not? And Bob Holly. Bob Holly will kill somebody before that. It, before it's over, right? <laughs> or exactly. the, yeah, Bob's killing somebody. Uh... Bob is Bob is doing what I'm doing right now, except not on a podcast. He's just fucking at home going fuck it, fuck, fuck. He's as grumpy as I am. How many did you pick? How many how many names did you throw I in there? I gotta six. think of who to uh I would go with Billy Jack Haynes. He just passed. Buck Zumhoff. He died? Billy Jack? No, he yeah. killed he killed his wife. Oh. Yeah. Well, he ain't getting out, so he can't well, have but, him well, on but the but show. As part of the sentence, he goes in with Buck Zumhoff. We let him out of prison, put him in there with Billy Jack. Jimmy Snook. Oh, he's is Snook a dead? He's, yeah. God damn it. Do right, so you want to play fucking dead or alive? I'll pull it ben, wa- ben was oh. out too then. <laughs> God damn it. I'll work on the rest. Of All right, work on that later. Vince McMahon maybe at this point. Put, put it. Figure out who to put in there. Make it entertaining. Um, Ryan from the gym. Welp, planning my World Disney World trip. Since all pro wrestlers moonlight as travel agents, do you have any tips for saving on airfare? Any travel tips in general? Uh, you've picked up making towns. Kevin's advice is don't go. No, I. Number one, I mean, I there's I fly first class, so I don't. And I've, I've been flying first class for fucking twenty five, thirty years. So I don't. You don't get a you don't you don't get a discount. Right. You fucking you pay. So. um It doesn't matter what the fuck. Go ahead and uh, spend a couple of buy buy lunch at Disney <laughs> under two hundred bucks. I mean, it's that's just fuck. People yeah. spend like twenty five thousand dollars for a week at Disney with like two kids. If it's becoming stay, really if, insane. If they, yeah, if they stay on property. <clears throat> It's like if you stay on property, man. Like back in the day, if you stayed at the fucking Breakers at Cedar Point, and we did it one time, where you're actually on the hotel on the lake in Sandusky at Cedar Point. Fucking that was balling, man. Mm. Cedar Point still. I would like to like go back. That's not, that may be on my bucket list. Not that my neck can take any of the rides. I would just, mm-hmm. just like to walk around Cedar Point because like that was like that was our Disneyland. Okay. Boblo was pretty sweet. This is too. this is in this is in Michigan? Oh Ohio. Ohio. Uh how about from the audience? We have anybody in the audience that wants to throw something in for Kev here? Uh Dan. Um any stories to share from recording Legends of Wrestling Roundtables? What a great group of guys on that. Did we go over that last? Uh, I think you talked about. Did I talk uh, about it? We, me, Sean, and, and Scott did one. Oh. And we were. Oh, this is before. I wasn't ever on the show, was I? It was the precursor to this. It was right here. This is the. This is. Uh, Am I on that? Is that Kevin right there? Yes. Uh, you're with Jr. It looks like, and I'm Gene. with fucking. I'm with Gene. So that right there tells me I fucking have cocktails. <laughs> there's scotch but, involved. Yeah. Right? There's fucking yeah. Uh, JJ. There's JJ. Was that Michael Hayes? Oh uh, yeah. Who's, there's scotch involved. Who's that? Who's who's, who's Jr. Who's, Jr. Yeah. Must have been a memorable edition of the show, Kevin. The 
Just pull me up. Do I have a jacket on? I think you're you're clad in a in a in a blazer. Got the hair slicked you, back in in the pony. No, can you pull? No, I can you pull? Yeah, I think he's looking for a close up of you. There you go. What jacket do I have? It's my black suit. Looked like somebody just stuck a finger up my ass. I was going to say, and that's the that's the proctology. Are you sure that's right fucking, there. you sure that's a polyp? Moon River. <laughs> right, what else we got? Who else in the house? Uh, well, I'm, I'm not dyed too fucking hard in that motherfucker. Say, you hit the that beard, looks, you hit the that, beard that, that, that time. Looks, yeah, that looks fucking real. Fucking horrible. The guy wearing the fucking toupee, see? That's like we used to always say, fucking, we'd be we get on a plane and we'd be sitting someplace, and the guy in front of us would be fucking have a toupee on, and uh, Sean Michaels was it was Sean and fucking and Scott's fucking gig, like there was their fucking back and forth, but of course if if you were to, happen to be sitting one next to one of them, but if a guy sat in front of you with a toupee. It would start off with the f- first thing you would do is you fucking like you, you know, notice it, and then immediately you, you do do the. We just kind of look at each other like, and then like nod, and then fucking say. So Sean, that new suburban that you bought, what did that cost you? And Sean would say, "Well, I paid fifty three thousand dollars for it." And you'd say, oh, geez, that's way too much to pay. And we would go back and forth for like a half fucking hour of this. And I mean, we we actually had fucking like, I, I had a guy like like sit up and go, like enough, all right? Wow. What do you mean enough? Like we're the one to a row of wrestlers. Like we're we're the one having to look at this fucking dead rug. Like fuck you, man. Did Take the it co- off, did the top come down on the suburban? <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going to say that it, the contest becomes who can accidentally knock it off, like uh, going climbing. I remember one time fucking some guy said something, and Vader was sitting behind him, and Vader, man, like Vader was strong as fuck, and. uh Vader just fucking like did like a fucking like an offensive lineman forearm shiver and fucking just folded the fucking seat on the guy. An airplane seat? Yeah. Wow. Just folded it. And I was just like, <laughs> I was sitting over there fucking drinking my fucking drink going, oh, fuck, man. But this is, you know, this is before air marshals or fucking two okay. douchebags want to throw the hot chick off the plane. Way before that fucking shit. This is um Oh no, I'm not no, I'm not getting off. Because it's gonna fuck up my whole Zen moment. Exactly. Uh heading eight. Hey Kev, got any good foley stories from back in the day? I was like hearing about how he would squeeze every nickel he could and knew where every deal was. I traveled a lot with Mick. He, the thing about Mick is it's like there are so few of the boys that are, are absolutely brilliant fucking conversationalists that know something and follow. Like, he loves sports. Like, we were talking the other day. I was, I was going to go to Cincinnati, and I was going to do a signing. And it just, they shipped a Tamar's thing, and I was just like, I just, I just had a bad feeling that leaving her at home and just, I, just, I knew mind wise her knowing I was going to get home Sunday night at midnight. I would have got home at one o'clock and we're turning around and, you know, not that I got anything done that weekend uh, as far as getting supplies or anything else, but it was at least the effort that she saw that I was on the team. But uh, Mick sends me a text. And he had like you know remember his the wanted cactus jack yeah, shirt. Yeah, sure. Well, he had Caitlin, uh, the little the baller from Iowa, the female, the mm-hmm. uh, all time leading scorer in NCAA history. And he had her face, and he said, "Would you wear?" It? He said, "What size?" Would you? I said, 2 X would fit me." And we were going to get together and take this shot, 
that put it out on social media that we were that we were fans. So only Mick, you know, and and Mick like me has been following this girl since her sophomore year, like you know. But then again, I you know, I know I, I know half the you know half the roster on most of the WNBA teams because when it's fucking, uh, I'm watching I'm watching uh, ice I'm watching Ice Cube's three on three I'm watching. If it's ball, I'm watching it. You're watching it. it yeah. yeah, I'm watching it, man. I don't give a fuck. In uh in Todd is God on sale at your local bookseller, Todd tells a story when, when Cactus worked in ECW and um he had his parents come down for, for one of the shows and they stayed at the the Travel Lodge, the den of iniquity that uh, ECW would take over after the shows. And so he knocks on Todd's door early in the morning and he's like uh, hey Todd, um, you know my parents are gonna come out of their room soon, go down for the buffet, and Johnny Grunge is laying in front of their door in his underwear. Can you do something about that? Apparently, Johnny Grunge had, um, in the middle of the night, gotten up in his underwear, used the bathroom. He had the, the bathroom door and the hotel door, fifty-fifty shot, and wouldn't you know it, he chose the uh, the the main uh, the door to his room and passed out into the hallway. And the uh, the maids were standing over him, kind of tapping him with the uh, feather dusters. And Cactus didn't want his parents to have to see that on their way to breakfast. Good guy that he is. TM, hey Kev, what was the overall opinion of and treatment towards career jobbers like Steve Lombardi, Barry Horowitz, and Barry O? From one vet to another, Semper Fi, brother. Uh, big thanks to you and Sean for being my weekly escape. All, all those guys could work. All those guys busted their asses. I mean, they were the boys. I mean, doesn't matter. I mean, they so they were they dressed among you. They yeah, they were. I I was friends with all of them. Could drink with you guys in the bars. Absolutely. And, all right. Absolutely. You're one of the boys. You're one of the boys. Scott Weber. I recently watched a YouTube video from. Deep Cuts WCW, and it featured an episode of Family Feud, WCW Stars Against Glow Stars. Kev, how did you and Sid get roped into this? Any good stories to Jeff on We got stars? paid. Um, they, we crushed those girls so bad. Dutch was on our team. Kevin Sullivan, me, Sid, maybe Tony Schiavone was the fifth. Okay. And you know, we shot you shoot five episodes in a day. And that was Combs was the host of Family Feud at the time. Dawson was gone, and um, and Combs ended up committing suicide. He did, yeah, yeah. Uh, probably because of that that episode. There you yeah, are. Well, Let's I, see. I'm I'm trying to grow my my mohawk out. Yeah, who's on the end there? That's Sully. It's oh, Sid, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, Sid Dutch. Yeah, it is yeah, Sid, Sid Dutch, myself, uh, Tony, and Kev. It's so small on my screen. It looks like we smoked. Yeah. We smoked those the girls so bad that, and we we like we would take a break after the show, uh, <laughs> each each episode, and the, the producer came in. He says, um, like you know, you guys are pro wrestlers. Like you guys want to have a problem, and I think Dutch says, I, like, takes the words out of his mouth. Dutch says, "Put him over." <laughs> like I you love know, it. Like, worker, typical right? Ever the like, worker, like, right? Like what? Put what, 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 Put him over. Put him over. And like and the guys, like he doesn't. And the Dutch says, "You want us to let them win?" <laughs> yeah, he goes, "Got it." And we we're all like, yeah, it's like, we don't give a fuck. So we just, you know, that's Brad Armstrong. There's another Hillman, edition. Yeah. Jim Ross, the Z-Man, Tom Zink, and yes, the Stinger. The Stinger? Z-Man was a fucking, he was a good fucking dude. Zank, yeah. All their, I loved fuck me and Brad. One of my my first uh, Japanese tour, me and, me and Brad. Uh, I was on it with Brad, and he showed me the ropes. We ran into Chaka Khan and, uh, in Tokyo, checking into the Kiyo Plaza, 
And I said, fuck, that's Chaka Khan. And Brad says, you sure? I'm thinking, dude, we're in Tokyo, man. There's only one Chaka Khan. And uh, so we, uh, I walked over to, you know, I just, I just was a huge fan. And um, she was doing a, a, like a small, like, torch songs. And it was downstairs somewhere in, in, in Tokyo. And we were both on early. We were at that uh, small building in Tokyo, whatever the fucking Corky and Crokey and whatever the fuck it is called, Hall. Fucking, I just lost fucking points for Meltzer. I was going to say, <laughs> well, say Waltman's not going to call you tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I'll get fucking. <clears throat> but uh, Brad had a match with Hase, and they fucking tore it down, man. Brad was so, far, oh, he was so over in, in, in Japan. Because, man, that motherfucker could work. Mm. And um, that was uh, that's, that same. That, so, you know, we, 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 and we, we go down, man, and, and we're, like, sitting. In, it's the fucking clubs about the size of this fucking condo living room. And Chaka's there, and there's somebody playing a fucking piano. And I think there's a guy on a bass. And I don't think it was a sax. I want to think it was a clarinet. Hmm. And um, she's like this far from us singing, and I'm thinking to myself like, "This is fucking pretty fucking sweet." We're drinking those Asahi Super Dries, big fucking twenty three point four ounce bottles, whatever they are. So, uh, trip goes on, and because you ain't you ain't making no fucking money, man. So you you know you you know you find out where the yakitori places are. Yakitori is just chicken breast on a fucking stick with you know, teriyaki sauce. So you go to those yakitori houses and fucking fill up on rice and eat, get your get enough protein, but you get have a couple beers. So there's some Japanese girls sitting next to us. I get up, man, I go take a piss. I come back and my fucking beer's foaming. I'm like, what the fuck? So I fucking, you know, I drink it, drink it. I look and I fucking see on the bottom end there's a fucking pill. You got zooted. I'm like, fuck, man. I said, Brad, I said, fuck, dude. I said, he goes, I, I wasn't paying attention, man. So, fucking, I get up, I go to the bathroom again, I come back, my fucking beer's doing the same fucking thing. I said, dude, he goes, I've never taken fucking a pill in my life. Okay? Up until this point, I've never recreationally taken a pill before. And, Anybody that knows the, the fucking the wrestling uh, history of the fucking Armstrongs knows that the the bullet was fucking he was the man. He'd fucking tell you, man, if fucking like a like a two milligram Xanax, you know, he says, "You gotta watch them sticks, man. They'll creep up on you." And you know, I I think that the the Armstrongs are credited for um. For for bringing uh, chlorcipital somas into the into the wrestling business, into the industry, into the uh, yeah, and so I I said I looked at Brad and he just fucking smiles. I said, "Dude, are you putting these?" He says, "He says, yeah, of course." He I is. said, "Dude, I said, just give them to me, like hand them to me. I'll fucking I'll eat fucking pills. I'm 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 cracked. I've been here. I've been in Japan for three weeks, you know." And it's just like, I just don't want you fucking up the face of my beers. <laughs> and that's when it started, man. I started taking fucking gimmicks on that fucking trip. And, man, it was a, I, I, I can't say that I have not continued my fucking, uh, my love for the calorie-free fucking uh, prescription drugs. Wow. I never heard that one. That's a good one. I take a Xanax every night before I go to bed. And I, I talked to my, my doctor is a fucking, he is a, like, addiction specialist. Mm -hmm. And he said, you've been taking Xanax for 30-something years. He goes, at this point, at 65 years old, he says, like, you, you he said, it's, it's harder to come off of fucking benzos than his heroin. And he said... You don't abuse them. You don't, like, you know, like at this point, 
I put it, I, I think it's more that the fact I put it underneath my tongue and let it melt every night because it, it's like, it, I, I, I have, I, I've noticed lately, um, I have fucking panic attacks and I used to have them a lot. To the point where man was like, I'd be driving, all of a sudden I'd be on the fucking end of the hood of my car, going, <gasps> like you know, like these fucking like just, I mean, debilitating fucking anxiety attacks. And um, I just lately, in the last two or three years, started having them again. So now it's um, I keep uh, I, t- I keep a Xanax in my in my car in a, in a pill vial. Because the last thing I want is to get pill, put, pulled over and have a fucking two milligram Xanax and not have it in a prescription bottle. Right. In the because bottle. that's that's where your mind is at 64. You know, like, like the last thing I'm doing is getting cuffed and explaining shit to anybody. Like, I'm, I, I don't fucking, I, I go up and down the beach road, I set my fucking cruise at 37, it's 35. It's like, I'm not fucking, I'm not looking to get fucked with. I just want to go fucking to the gym and go home. And so now that I don't drink, it just takes one more equation out of it. We sit down at Hyde Park and I'd have to go, I don't know, man. Like, I don't feel like I got a buzz, but who knows what the fuck I'd blow. What you blow, exactly. You know, because, you know, nowadays in Florida, it's like, you know, point zero one. (laughs) You know, it's like nothing. So I say, man, it just takes that fucking, takes that out of the equation. Well, Click This is a production of Books and Sundance Media, produced in association with Podcast Heat, created by Tristan Nash, Kevin Nash, and Sean Oliver, producer Steve Kaufman, graphics by Dominic D'Angelo, title sequence and audio edit by Wesley Burleson, theme song by Dale Oliver, technical research by Tristan Nash, copyright 2024, Butch and Sundance Media. Kev, you want to do another one? Well, after throwing the Armstrongs underneath the fucking bus, I think I, I, I think I have to. If I can apply, at least I owe them apology. Next week, the Armstrong episode. Yeah, the customer.